their solutions to perfect problem four from math 243. Um, basic idea here is I want to illustrate what's called the central limit theorem. So what I did is I made this big list of data in list A here, 30 observations. Um, and I tried to make data that's very left skewed. See, most of our observations down here are pretty low in the 40s, 50s, 60s. But then we got a few that are way up here, way bigger. Um, so this is right skewed data. Is that what I said? This day is very skewed. I didn't say. Um, it should be very right skewed. I might have just screwed that up. But at any rate, I have this list of very skewed data. Um, and then what I did is I created another list, list B, by randomly selecting two of these guys. So completely at random, check select two of them, and then find that average, and that's my first observation here. Completely randomly select two more, average those numbers, get this guy, and so on to create this whole list. And then with list C, what I did is I randomly selected 10 of these guys and averaged those out, and that went here. Randomly selected 10 again, that went here. Randomly selected 10 again, that went here. And I kept doing that until I had, I think it's 30 of each of these observations. And so the idea of this problem is we want to kind of compute the mean standard deviation and look at the shape of each of these three lists. So really the worst part about this problem is just entering all the data. I already went and entered it here. Um, if you go stat, edit, you can type in all these values. I put list A and L1, list B and L2, and list C and L3. Um, I have a separate video on inputting data if that's an issue for you. Um, but once you have all the data put in, it's not too bad. So let's see, the first part here, it says, maybe we'll focus on list A. Um, calculate the mean and the standard deviation. So we can do that if you, the way to get your calculator to calculate the mean and the standard deviation is hit your stat button and then go to calc, and then one variable statistics. So I want one variable statistics on L1, and that will give me my mean and my standard deviation. Um, so the mean is up here, this 98. It's annoying. Uh, the mean is equal to 98.33. And my standard deviation is equal to 97.63. Um, so this is kind of my starting spot. This is list A, mean and standard deviation. Now what it wants me to do is sketch a histogram and comment on its shape. Right, um, now we can sketch a histogram of that data. Um, it should be very, what, right skewed, I think we said, but let's take a look. Um, the way you make a histogram is you go under stat plots here. Actually, maybe first you should hit y equals. It's y equals key and make sure you don't have any equations on. If you do, either clear them out or unhighlight the equals sign to get them to not show up. Um, and then go into stat plot. So second y equals. Um, go into our first stat plot here. Actually, I have a whole video on making histograms, so maybe I'll go through this kind of quickly. I'll turn it on. Select the third type, which is a histogram, and then I want a histogram on L1. Um, then I can just hit zoom 9 for zoom stat, and it'll draw a little histogram for me. Um, if you don't like its scale, you can hit window and make your own. So let's see. Let's go from X is 0 all the way until X is, what's our largest observation, is 400. So sure, maybe 450 to go a little bit above. Um, and then X scale here says how big you want your bins to be. Um, I don't know, maybe let's try at 25 at first, see how that works. And you can leave all that Y stuff alone. Graph, you get a picture that looks kind of like this. Yeah, that'll do the trick. So let's see, my histogram looks roughly... like this with a few kind of hanging out here. Yeah, something like that. Good enough. Um, this is with bin size of 25. Yours may vary. Um, 
and let's see, did, I guess it said comment on the shape. Maybe I'll say very right skewed. Why is it very right skewed? Because most of the data is over here to the left and has this really long tail to the right. So it's about as dad, bad as your data can be. Um, all right, now we'll repeat this with list B. Um, kind of done everything. We're just going to repeat. I've already put in all the points. So I'm going to go to calc, one variable statistics. But now I want to do L2 because that's where list B is. And it tells me that my mean... is equal to 102 and my standard deviation is equal to 68 good enough um, and then we can get a histogram by going back into stat plots stat plots and then instead of using L1 we can use L2 um, take a look at the graph we might want to change it a little bit yeah, I guess that'll work. Maybe let's do, uh, let's change our window a little bit. Our largest observation in list B looks like is what, 250 or so, 230 something. So I can make this quite a bit smaller. Um, and since it's smaller, maybe I'll make my bins a little bit smaller. Or maybe it was fine how it was. Let's leave it at 25. Um, that gives me this picture. Okay. So let's see, now I have something that looks more or less like this. I'll just kind of try to roughly shape the outline. It's not that important that yours looks exactly like this. All I want you to note, okay, this is with bin size 25 again. And again, yours may vary. Um, for the shape, I would say it still uh, looks to be right skewed. Um, we could have made the bins a little bit bigger to try to aggregate some of this, but I think no matter what you do, you'll still get something right skewed-ish, but maybe not quite as bad as this. Maybe it's starting to kind of be a little bit more symmetric. Um, what else did it want us to do? Uh, we want to compare our mean and our standard deviation to what we expected it to be. Um, our expected mean would just be the mean from list A. So we'd expect our mean to be 98.33. And we'd expect our standard deviation to be 97.63 divided by the square root of n, which is 2 in this case, because each of these are an average of two observations. So we can calculate what that's equal to by doing 97.63 divided by square root of 2 and we get that this is equal to 69 call it 69 and then I'll say um, I don't know they're close we expected 102 we got or we expected 98 we got 102 we expected 69 we got 68 I'll say note uh, we're pretty close to expected expected values something like that um, and then finally we'll repeat this one more time with list C kind of going through those same steps so first we're going to calculate the mean and the standard deviation one variable statistics but I want to use L3 now and we get that our mean is equal to 99.8. Um, and our standard deviation 
is equal to 33. Um, and then we can try to calc or draw a little histogram. Um, same idea, go under stat plots, except now we want to use L3. Um, maybe we'll change our window a little bit also. Looks like these observations, what, they're all below 200 anyways, right? One, oh, there's 205. Okay, so maybe make this go up to like 210, 220. And maybe we'll make this a little bit bigger. Maybe we can make this like 40. See if that gives us enough of a shape. Um, okay, maybe those bins were a little bit too big. Maybe I'll go back here and make it 30. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's getting pretty good. Um, just out of curiosity, I wonder if we had left it at 25, if we had gotten a better picture. Yeah, either way will work. So sure, maybe we'll leave it like this. So with 25, what happens is we get a picture that looks something like this. Looks like we had one observation out here. Um, starting to look symmetric. Maybe I'll say slash approximately normal. So that's good, that's the central limit theorem in action there, that our shape, even though we're just averaging values that come from this data, is starting to look a lot more symmetric, it's a lot more normal, something like this. Um, then we're almost done, we just gotta figure out our expected mean. Uh, then to figure out our expected mean, it's just the exact same as list A, 98.33, we never expect the mean to change. Change a tiny bit, 99.8 to 98.33, pretty close. And our expected standard deviation. Um, that's our original standard deviation from list A of 97.63 divided by the square root of n. In this case, n is equal to 10 because these are each the average of 10 observations. So we can figure out what 97.63 divided by root 10 is. Using a calculator, 97.63 divided by square root 10, and we get 30 point, I don't know, 30.9. Um, and again, close to what we expected. Maybe again, actual and expected. Are close. Um, expected. Good enough. Um, and I think that's everything I wanted us to do, right? Sketch the histograms, comment on its shape. Um, yeah, uh, so that's the end of this perfect problem. Just kind of looking at the central limit theorem and how it affects the sampling distribution standard deviations and the shape of the sampling distributions.